One of the highlights of Thanksgiving for me is the stuffing. I love all the Thanksgiving flavors wrapped into one dish. I'm going to show you how I veganized grandma's stuffing recipe, and if you stay by to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how I turn that into a vegan or vegetarian entree. To get started on the stuffing, you will need to break down the celery. I chop off both ends and then wash it really well. Celery tends to be dirty, so I give it a good wash, and then I chop it into small pieces. I like to use this handy dandy little chopper, which makes perfect cuts without a lot of work. It's also a good way to get the kids to help you in the kitchen. All you have to do is put the big chunks of celery on the blades and give it a good whack. And in moments, you have a bunch of chopped celery for your stuffing. I also like to do my onions the same way. While I have the chopper out, I usually do a couple of extra onions so that I have them prepared for another meal. I chop it into small chunks and then put it on the chopper and give it a good whack. And again, a bunch of tiny little pieces, a bunch of tiny perfect little pieces of onion. Now it's time to get out a large high-sided skillet and put it on medium heat. I'll add one stick or a half a cup of country crock plant butter. Any plant butter will do the trick as long as it tastes good. Once that is melted, I add two cups of onions and give it a quick stir. Before I put in two cups of celery. Keep that cooking until the onions are clear and the celery is softened. It will take about seven to eight minutes. Once that's done, I add a bag of Pepperidge Farm sage and onion stuffing mix and stir that well to coat all of the bread with the butter and the nice flavors of the onions and celery. Next, you'll add in some state, some sage, and some plant milk that is mixed with country, with chicken style seasoning or some no chicken bouillon to give it a lot more flavor. Give that another stir because you want the bread cubes to get moistened. If, it, if you feel like it's too dry, you can add a little bit more plant milk, but do not add too much plant milk or the bread will be soggy and your stuffing will have a mushy texture, which is never good. I like to let that sit for a little while so that the bottom gets nice and brown and then I flip it and brown the other side. Once that's all done, I put it into a serving dish. See those nice little bits of brown? That is a lot of flavor on that stuffing. I'll set this aside until almost time to eat and then I'll pop it in the oven to crisp up the top. Hey, if you're enjoying this recipe, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to do yourself a favor, click that notification bell so you don't miss any of these great Thanksgiving recipes. Let's get back to it. To turn this into a main dish, I simply add some veggie chicken or turkey. This is a homemade recipe I like to use in place of rotisserie chicken in recipes, but any meat substitute will work here. Even soy curls would be great. If you want my recipe for the veggie chicken, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to make a video on that sometime soon. I like to put that into a pan and brown it for a few minutes to add a, a lot of good flavor to the stuffing. Once I add the veggie chicken to my stuffing, I give it a good stir, make sure it's all mixed in and warm it in the oven. It makes a great entree for your vegetarian or vegan family members. It's time to taste the stuffing. I'm so excited. This is my favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal. Mm. Oh, it's so good. It reminds me of my childhood. Grandma used to make stuffing just like this. This tastes just like the way Grandma used to make it. Do you know how I like to eat my stuffing? I like to eat it right on top of my mashed potatoes. Do you know how to make vegan mashed potatoes? Oh, I've got a fantastic video to show you how to make vegan mashed potatoes just like Grandma did. Watch this.